उस Hi everyone, thanks for coming along again. Uh, we'll get started start in a couple of minutes. It's a couple of minutes before three. We'll just see who else comes along. So leave a message. Let me know that you're there, so I know who uh, we're with today. Um, Bruce Harry from down the mountain. Good to see you, buddy. It's a bit chilly up here today. Although I must admit, I thought it'd be colder than it is. But anyway. Uh, Dipanka, us, good to see you from India. And Daniel, always uh, consistent. Daniel Langworthy, good on you, buddy. I hope you're enjoying the training. Rochelle from uh, Dawson Creek in Canada, fantastic. Rochelle's a real scientist, you know. She actually lectures. What was the lecture? I think it was, um, don't tell me, pharma, pharmaceutical or pharma. Or, or, see, that tells, you how, uh, that tells you how scientific I am, Rochelle. Um, I know that you're involved with um, pharmacology and things like that, I believe. But anyway, uh, so I never say anything about anything when with, to do with pharmacology when Rochelle's around because I'm bound to get it wrong. Oops. Pharmacotherapeutics, there, pharmacotherapeutics, there you go. If anyone's got any question about uh, anything, I had a good chat with Rochelle a few weeks back about the uh, – progress of, of um, science in terms of providing a vaccine for uh, the COVID-19, you know, it's a possibility it was going to take a while. Fantastic. Daniel, Daniel C. Uh, Harry from down the mountain. Mel, good to see you, buddy. Graham Norton, all the way from, uh, Graham Norman, I mean, all the way from, uh, uh, are you from South Africa? I believe. And Mike Clark, us. Good to see you, Mike. Uh, Look, thanks for coming along, everyone. Um, likewise, Rochelle, good on you. Now, um, today I just wanted to, it's probably, it could even be shorter, I don't know, um, but I've got a, a couple of things I want to cover. I want to go over the cocaine. I want to go over the uh, the sunshine. You know, when we break out and that initial double breakout, well, uh, which hand goes on top? Little things like that I want to discuss but there's no point in discussing it unless you think about it and have a good reason why, okay? So, uh, apologist, Rochelle, you and Harry could get along famously. <laughs> um, I want to discuss that, talk about why exactly uh, we put which arm on top when we break out in the sunshine stance. Um, also, what it is about the yoy stance and so on. You know, the word yoy actually means preparedness. And, and if you like, a lot of people use the yoy to relax, but in reality, yoy is a little bit like military version of attention, you know, and then when they say stand at ease, well, then you can scratch and wipe the sweat away, but until then, it's just like yoy is a, a fixed stance, and the reality is that's the first step that we take into everything that we do, so unless you get that right in terms of the mentality behind it as well, well, then it's very difficult then to carry over that uh, sense of awareness and then it carries over to everything. Yoy literally means being prepared, being alert. So it's important that you bite the toes into the ground so you see the whites of the toes. Your knees are slightly bent. Your fists are, are, are strong. Your shoulders are relaxed and back. All those sort of little things. Oh, Janet. Good to see you. I'm glad you made it coming by. Janet's one of, uh, well, almost one of my students, but um, we spent a lot of time training together over the years, especially in preparing for her second Dan. Rob from Tassie, good to see you, buddy. Uh, and I also want to revisit the NK Gyakuski connection to the Mawashiuke and Shito Mawashiuke because, and we want to do that in a little bit of a pattern. And it's it's possible that we'll go from there into a step further because if the NK Gyakuski and the Mawashiuke and the Shito Mawashiuke are all fairly similar, in fact, and you combine that with some parts of the um, shto, well, then it comes down to what determines which one you use. And I tend to find that what determines that is um, the angle that the, your opponent's at. You know, uh, another thing that would be great once we um, get back to doing two-man drills is to work on certain drills that we do with our eyes closed. And I can tell you now that one of those drills is not an impact drill. I'm not going to stand there and do the, uh, you know, throw that punch at me and I'll pick it up because I guarantee I won't pick it up. But 
sensitivity drills are really important because when you're in range four and your head's buried right in on their neck and you've got control of their arm, you've got the collar tie in and you're that close, well, then your eyes are out of action, essentially. You know, you can keep them open, but more to the point is your, t your touch reacts much quicker than your eyes. They say the eye. Well, if you have your hand on their hand, you'll feel it before your eye sees it. So that's a really important aspect that I'd love to get into. And I wanted, I was hoping to get into it today if uh, Ben popped in, but um, lucky for Ben, he's back at work. In Australia, we're starting to uh, go through the steps to wind down from the lockdown, and we're back in the dojo very soon too. So that's a good thing. Us Raj from Nepal, good to see you. So we've got North America, Africa, Australia, Scandinavia, uh, the subcontinent of Nepal and India. Uh, so we're doing all right. Hopefully we'll have – I think Graham – are you from uh, – Graham Norman, are you from New Zealand, I think? Just remembered. But anyway, okay, so let's get going with a bit of a warm-up. Oh, shout-out to my uh, buddy Rico Ciparelli. If you don't know who Rico Ciparelli is, he's one of the uh, – this is his T-shirt. Um, it's a, a real rare T-shirt, and I spent a lot of time training with Rico in L.A. at the Re Real American Wrestling Center. On any day of the week, it was like a who's who of the great fighters, and I got to spend a lot of time training with uh, Vlad Matiensko, who was a great wrestler, um, Dan Henderson, who was an Olympic silver medalist, who went on to become a multiple UFC champion. Frank Trigg was a great frog fighter. I even went to uh, um, Japan and helped corner frank for his fights and of course the great randy couture and i had a, a great time training with them uh they're very highly experienced and really open so we spent a lot of time working leg kick drills working the mitts showing them how to punch and so on and uh was imran good to see you buddy and uh in return i got a lot of wrestling pretty well 90 i'd say 95 or anderson frank tree and vlad Matsensko, and uh, they were just really really fantastic to train with so today's my homage to them wearing the uh real american wrestling t-shirt with their great logo on the back see that Anyone, anywhere, anyhow. and they meant it too okay let's go get a warm-up i'll just adjust this hope everyone can hear me okay i'm just taking it for granted that if you couldn't hear me you would have let me know by now Okay, thanks for joining in. Knees, itch, knee, sun, she, hunter, itch, knee, sun, she, squatting, itch, knee, sun, she, knee, knee, sun, she, sun, knee, sun, she, little, and hips, itch, knee, sun, hunter, itch, knee, sun, she, double shoulder width. Right hand up, twisty, hitch, knee, sun, he, oh, go, hitch, touch, go, do, hitch, knee, sun, she, go, go, hitch, touch, go, and do, middle, hitch, knee, sun, knee, knee, sun, sun, knee, sun, she, knee, sun, pull to the right. And the left. Middle. And relax. Remember when you stretch just to relax. You grab the stretch. So bend the right leg. So grab is an acronym that I use. G-R-A-B, to get your gaze correct. Don't be stretching this way, but looking over there and chatting and looking over there and chatting. Have your head straight ahead. R is relaxation. A is alignment. So make sure all everything is aligned correctly as you're doing the technique. And breath, B is breath. Coordinate the stretch with the breath. Nice and relaxed. Sometimes I use the 
do the work for you. Don't fight it, just relax. Imagine yourself like a rubber band and just zero resistance. Just let gravity do the work. Nick? Forward, push, don't lean on the leg, push up from the leg if your arm is on the leg. Sun, toes in the air. Here's a nice place just to feel the gravity. Breathe in, breathe out, and let gravity do the work for you. Sides, nice and relaxed and deep. Deep. Push forward. Tom, toes in the air. Switch, itch, deep, song, deep, deep, song, song, deep, song, she, deep, song, uh, chico da chi. Bring your feet in slowly, hands resting on the top of the thighs. If you've got gi pants on, you put your hands too low to your knees, they just slide off. So try and put them up on the top. If you've got fantastically huge thigh muscles like anyone except me, your hands won't fall off. But when you've got skinny legs like me, sometimes you've got to <laughs> put them down. Left shoulder in. Straighten the arms. A nice stretch for the spine and the muscles around the spine. Ante, other side. Nice and deep. Even if you don't join in with the training part of it, just try and join in with this stretch because it's such a great series of, of stretches. The complete stretch that we do in training takes a little too long for these one-hour sessions. But they're a, they're a really complete stretch. Like I was saying, they stretch all the muscles, the joints, the tendons, even your fingertips when you do all the techniques here. In fact, I might do that today. That's a good stretch. Good. Nice and easy. Okay, Shiko Bumi. Remember the sumo stretch? It's a... Deep. Sun. Go. Look. Nice and deep. If you want to uh, get some great stretches, go and have a look at the YouTube channel KRT from uh, Darren Stringer and. Uh, Where's Janssen? Where's Janssen's about three times more flexible than me, and Darren Stringer is even worse. Okay, so they've got some great exercises. Plus, they're much younger. So if you're if you're young and you uh, really want to push your stretching, you've got to do it. You've got to spend the time on it. Okay, let's go. Wash you can. Miggy Sanchi, that's you. Right leg, right arm. Itch. Right hand up, bitch. Good. Okay. 
Son, now to the left, over the top of the head for the stretch. Sheep to the right. Dog. Behind. Dog. Behind. It's. Arch. The question arises, why would such difficult movements be introduced from the very first day of training? And it's a fair call. You know, that's not a simple move. I've come to the conclusion that the reason you do it from day one is when you do it in a group without any attention on you, you just follow along what's going on around you and you find your way. And then by the time you go for your first grading, you have it down so smoothly simply because of the warm-up exercise. Remember last time we did this movement here with one hand at a time, the hand that's up does everything, really. The whole movement, I'd say 90% of it is in, the, is in the front leg and front arm. So um, from here, well, I won't worry about the leg for now. But the arm, look at this movement, the top arm is here and around to there. So it comes here, around, and then withdraws there, there, withdraws. It's a large motion. Okay, so you do it like that, you block across the face. Bam. You, you always think in terms of what would happen if the guy was not a very nice but boom, you can move your head. Boom, you move the arm away. And you take it away and bring it back and crack. One, two, and even this movement here coming up is a nice little slap on the carotid sinus. <clears throat> and then back it up with a palm heel. That's the one arm movement. But look at the other arm. The other arm literally just goes from there to there to there. That's all you're doing. This one has got this block here, block there, withdraw, bang, block. Is that what I'm doing? I'm going the wrong way. I'm doing a different exercise. Look, from there, block, 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 block. Block, it's got three exercises. One, two, three, bang. This one has a block here, and that's about it. Just one. So it's prime, predominantly the upper arm. Okay, a little later today, what I wanted to do is look at the NK Gyatsuki. And even the Shutomoshiyuke, you analyze the Shutomoshiyuke, which we'll do a little later. Look at the front arm. Shoulder covers the jaw and neck. Comes up. Comes out. This hand is basically just hanging around, realistically. One, two. I take this hand out of it. All this does is that. All this does is that movement. Okay, so that, that is really strong there. That's your backup. That's your, your insurance policy. And what you can do there is there's your block. Here's the punch. Now you can grab their arm with this one. A lot of people are taught we go here and grab the arm with this one and then punch. But it's not realistic. You think about it. That punch is coming to here. So this hand blocks it here. Goes out. And the punch is around here now. A block. The arm's around there. Especially still coming in to grab. Now this hand can pull that one. And so you get that push-pull principle going on. Okay, we'll worry about that a little later. Let's keep warming up. Each knee, some she hunt each knee, some she shoulders each knee, some she hunt each knee, some she neck forward back each knee, some she go go each arch looking each knee, some she go look each arch round. Look after your neck. I can tell you now when I move my neck, it's like a bag of sand. I'm done. And that's primarily, I mentioned, the wrestlers I used to train with. Uh, boy, oh boy, they really know how to work your neck. Uh, so you've got to look after it over time. Okay, shake it off. Now let's do the gush shot. I just want to introduce the gush shot. You will all and strengthen your fingers. So that's actually gush shot. It means the hands come together in prayer. But we're going to face them down. Slide our little finger up. Itch. Now we come up, slide the thumbs down along the body. And palm heels into the body. Okay, so let's do it together now. Itch, knee, and sun. Come up, in, and down. Up, in, and down. Good. Now we put our hands back to back. 
and we press it together there. Push the elbows down this time. Good. Okay, here's another good exercise you can do. Turn your hand like this with the thumb away from you and put your hand on the back of the hand of Venus. Grab it there like that. Okay, with a handful. I'm here. I'll just quick them, check the messages. Harry, you're in the raw. Yes, indeed I am. Leo, oh, good to see you. Midnight, where you are. Gaza, good to see you, buddy. And Savitri from India. Fantastic. Thanks for coming, guys. Good to see you. Okay, thumb out. Hold the mound of the thumb and you keep the hand straight as you push it down. You get a really good rotational stretch to the wrist as well. And that really helps when you're dealing with guys who do a lot of wrist turns. Sometimes in the dojo, we'll spend a week or two or four or six working a lot on wrist locks and so on. And if you do this exercise, you come away with it uh, feeling a lot easier. Okay, pull down. Okay, now watch what I do. Rotate my thumb towards me like I'm now my fingers are down and my thumb is facing me. Once again, hold the hand, but now you hold the bend, the mound on the wrist. This is an Aikido stretch. And they do a lot of wrist work in Aikido. They're like that. Good. Okay. Again, fingers up, thumb out. Hold the thumb. Push down. Itch. Knee. Sun. She. And down. Itch. Knee. Sun. She. Good. Fingertips together. Don't just bend them like that. There's no strength involved in that. Push your fingers together close to your body. And nice and strong. Itch. Good. And shake it. Now, fingers out. Itch. Squeeze, get a good pressure of the pec. Good. Now the third time what I like to do is press with the arms out and keep the tension as you push it into the body. Again, it's okay. so let's let's go back to looking at the connection between wrist power. Colombia, there we go. So we've got South America, North America, Africa, Australia, uh, continental Asia. Uh, and Scandinavia, how cool is that, even though there's not many of us. Um, my, the first day I did, I, th I thought I had 17 million. Actually, I just had 17. <laughs> but it's good to be positive. Okay. I want to look at NK Gyakuski once again, and I want to do the NK Gyakuski in a bit of a, a jiji, a bit of a cry. And Kenneth, Kenneth from Melbourne. Good on you, buddy. Good to see you. Okay. So NK Gyakuski, remember? Our body moves away from the attack. Look, bang, there like that. My arm comes up. When we practice it in training, we'll literally step to the side in Zen Kutsu, put our arm down. Turn punch, we, we transfer the weight from predominantly left leg across the center to predominantly right. It's only about a foot, but it's still a significant length of movement. Arm goes down, up, 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 turn the circle. Punch, down, up, up, up. Remember, this is where it's all happening, okay? Up, up, large circle round, grab, transfer, itch, knee, sun, she, go, look, itch, punch, go. Okay, now watch what I do just for fun. Okay, I'm going to go one, two, but he attacks again. My angle is such that I can't really use the end of ski again, but what I can do is use the Maishuke again. Okay, so I'm here. I block once. I hit, but he comes in at me again. Boom, I lift my arms up in the Kung Fu sort of movement and stop. Now, I want to feel this idea of not having this hand be something that grabs. It's this hand here. I want you to feel like it grabs now, okay? And as I pull it in, I can back fist. You see that move? Pull the arm in, so I've got the push-pull principle. The golden, one thing you can do for even for the rest of the year is try to think in terms of the push-pull in every single thing that you do. If you get that concept going on, it'll help everything you do. 
especially when you're connected to someone. If you have something to hold on to um, from that push-pull rather than just the power going out, you also get a head-on collision going in. So we're here. NK Gatsuki, reverse punch, pull straight back, Stormo Ashuke. Okay, I can grab and hit, or I can I can straight from there, reverse punch again. Let's try that. So I'm going to go from here, Zen Kutsu, arm big circle. Hit and reverse straight away into uh, Moashike, uh, Storm Moashike. Okay, now from there, I can pull, hit, or punch, or pull, hit, and punch if you like. Okay, and another thing I like to add when I practice this, and I'll do a little bit of a drill to show you what I do with it later, is I'll add the Moashike. I like to constantly work on the connection between NK Gyakuski, Storm Moashike, Okay, and and then once you get that wash you going, well then of course you've got the potential as well. So I'll show you a little pattern that I use sometimes to play with, so you start to get a feel. NK uh, the NK Yatsuki, Mawashiuke, boom, still Mawashiuke like that. It's a really nice flow. So we start off from here. We go right Zenkutsu, arm up circle. Hit and withdraw straight away with Hokutsu with Storm Oshuke. And then from there, hit again. Okay, now we, we turn face this side. NK Gyatsuki again with the right arm now. We hit and withdraw Storm Oshuke again. And once again, we can either hold that at bay and hit there or grab with this one and hit there. Okay, let's try that left and right. Ready, left arm, pitch. And from there, reverse punch. So just for the sake of uh, simplicity, you can do Gyakuski twice. One, two. One, two. Like that. And the beauty is this arm is always there monitoring what's going on. Okay? Left, uh, left side again, remember? Step out of the right, block. One, reverse punch there. One, two. It's... <laughs> Mid. Did I do the reverse? Uh, the storm wash you there. Again, NK Gyatsuki. Itch and wash you here. Me. NK Gyatsuki. Notice this is where the action is. NK Gyatsuki. Like that. Okay, now let's make it a little bit more three dimensional. What I'm going to do now is turn it into a. Uh, is. Oh. oh hey. I just put it in a glass. I've got to double check. Got Patty here. Patty usually heads straight off after this and does his own online session for the kids. And we've got uh, Paul Kniv from Germany. So we literally have we've got Scandinavia, Europe, Africa, Australia, continental Asia, North America, South America. All we need is Quinn the Eskimo for North America. Oh, we've got Japan. So we've got the Far East as well. Good to see you, Rod. And if Quinn the Eskimo was here, we have the North Pole covered, and then all we need is a couple of those secret aliens that apparently live underground in the Antarctica. We'll have the whole world covered. I'll tell you something nice that I do, though. I digress. Uh, when my parents died, I have a, a vial of their ashes, and my uh, dad used to love travelling, so he said whenever I travel, take some with him. So, awesome, AJ. Yeah, we've got UK too. That's true. Uh, so I have the vial, and I've... Whenever I go anywhere in the world the last 20 years, I take this vial of ashes. So my parents' ashes are on every continent of the earth except for Antarctica, and I'm trying to work out a way to do that. I'll see if there's one of those. Um, oh, Ceviche's in Brizzy. doesn't matter. We've got Dipankar here, and, and uh, you know, Dipankar is from, uh, in um, India, and, uh, and we've got Raj in uh, Nepal. So we've still got the, the subcontinent covered, Siv, so don't worry about that. <laughs> anyway, no, we are. We're there. We're in India and, and Nepal. It's so cool. So anyway, I've, I've got my parents' ashes on some of the most amazing places in the world, Niagara Falls. I did that photo shoot with Solsai uh, back in 92, and uh, we took photos and went right over the edge of Niagara Falls. Someone told me where we were doesn't even exist anymore. But anyway, I've, I've got ashes there. I've got them everywhere and, except Antarctica, and I'm sure there must be one of those, you know, you do those two-hour or three-hour 
fly it, to get the ashes from inside outside, you know, maybe flush it down the loo. I don't know. But anyway, um, we've almost got the whole the world covered today. So that's great. Okay, let's have a look again at this NK. What I want to work on is the connection between NK Gyakuski, Mawashi Yuke, Shito Mawashi Yuke. All right. I think that's really valuable. So we're here and we're going to take the two dimension left and right and add forward and front, forward and back now as well. So I'm not too particular about your stance at this stage. I want the weight strong, but I recognize that anyone over 40 can have knee problems. So the Zen Kutsudachi can cause trouble. That's okay. So we start here. Just for the sake of it, let's go right. Zen Kutsu, and you can shorten it up if you, you want to. Left hand down. Now what? Okay, we'll just stop there for now. Now we go backwards. Enkei Gyatsuki, reverse punch, stop there. Okay, now we're going to extrapolate it. So this time, we're going to step straight back. So I step back here. Enkei Gyatsuki, reverse punch, Mawashiyuke, Oshito Mawashiyuke. Okay, then we turn behind. Right hand, one, two, three, okay, like that. Let's go again. Step in front this time. So as the technique comes in towards us, we step off, block it, one, two. Then we turn around, block, reverse punch, one, two. Now watch what I do here now. I'm going to change directions behind so the technique comes. From behind, I'm going to step here, block his arm. One, two. Back to the left. Now I'm back to the right. It's coming behind me. Step here, block. One, two. Okay, so we go four directions there. In a sec, we might even do the fifth. Okay, so watch again. We step back. One, two, to the front. Okay, then the attack comes from behind us. Except for that first one, you think in terms of the attack coming from behind. So we cover our head. One, two, three. Okay. Now the attack's coming from behind. So we move back, left arm. One, two, three. Again, the attack's coming from behind. One, two, three. Okay. And there's the four. So let's do it again. Step back off the front. I think it was... Um, Tobu Chalky said that just, or no, it might have been Fudakoshi Gitchin said, just because the kata starts on the left doesn't mean the attack is coming from the left. And in the dojo, we always work the principle, and I know some styles do this as well, so it's not original to me. It's something we decided on in the dojo, though. We work on the principle that no matter the direction of the start of the kata, the attack is from the front. So if, for example, you're in Pinan 2 and the, the kata starts like this, well, what we'll do is we imagine the attack coming from the front and we're moving off the side and we're doing the techniques like that. So we can imagine the same principle here now that what we're doing is we're dealing with the attack coming to the front. Okay? We step back, block. One, shutomuashuke. Now the attack comes from behind. Step out of the way. Shutomuashuke. Reverse punch, shutomuashuke. Now the attack come from behind my right shoulder. Step out of the way. My left leg, block NK Gyakuski, reverse punch, Shutomuashuke. Okay? Now, you can go whatever level you choose. If you're a white belt or orange belt and you just want to do the NK Gyakuski, that's 100%. Okay. So we go from here. We step off. One. Or if you want to do it to the front first. Step off. One. Two. Three. Four. There's your NK Gyakuski. I'm almost going into the shoot though. It's such a natural transition. Okay. If you're like uh, yellow belt, green belt, uh, brown belt even, you might want to add the Shitomo Ashuke. So now we step back. One. Shitomo Ashuke. Behind. One, two, three. Behind again. Oop, cover. One, two, three. Three, okay? Now, if you're a black belt, you can start to play with the uh, extra punch after brown belt, probably the extra punch after the Shitomo Ashuke. So let's look at that now. We step back. 
Block one. Reverse punch. Block. Reverse punch again. Block two. One. Reverse punch. Block. Reverse punch again. Block three. One. Two. One. And block four. One. Two. Block. And punch a second time. Okay, let's just try that. So now we're doing Enke Gyakuski, Gyakuski, And then we do Sto Mawashuke Gyakuski. And then, uh, so that's four punches. So we start by stepping back as the attack comes to the front. Step off. One, two, Sto Mawashuke. Reverse punch again. From behind now. One, two, Sto Mawashuke. Reverse punch. Attacks coming from behind. We step back, block. There's the block right here. Bang. Reverse punch. Storm wash you get. Reverse punch. Attack comes from behind again. One, two, three, two. Okay? So that's the next level. Now, we, and if that's enough for you, you stick to that even as we practice and go on from there. If the NK Gyakuski alone is enough, stick to that. If you want to do the NK Gyakuski plus the Stomai Shuke, knock yourself out. And for black belts now, you can add the Stomai or the Maa Shuke. So the idea whoa, bang, arc of tension, look, knee, shoulder, arc of tension once again. The whole idea is to find those arcs of tension connecting the NK Gyakuski, the Stomai Shuke and the Maa Shuke. So watch now. I'll just do my washi you care on the end of two sides first. So we step back, one, left hand. So we're in right hand kutu, but the left hand does enke gyakuski. Reverse punch. Mawashi you care. Reverse punch. And this one I don't retract the hickey there because it's too dangerous now. Okay, what I'm doing is I leave that hand there. Reverse punch. And now what I do is I'm going to step up with my right foot into left sanshi. <laughs> there like that. And the reverse punch is shuke. See that? Now the punch comes from behind. NK Gyakuski right hand. Gyakuski left hand. Shuke right hand. Gyakuski left hand. And step up. Mawashiuke. Okay? Like granted this is tricky. So this is why I say maybe it's good for black belts. If you get it as a white belt, all power to you, but don't overdo it. If you can't get past the feel of the arcs of tension through the uh, storm or uh, through the NK Gyakuski, there's just absolutely no point in rushing on to everything else. You know, you've got to learn to crawl before you can walk. Well, Shane, hey, you know what? It's so crazy. As I was walking from upstairs down to the dojo downstairs, I was wondering, I'm, I'm thinking, oh, I wonder how Shane's going. And here you are. It's just crazy. That's um, in Japanese, ishin denshin. Means you read my mind. So Imran asks, after the shitomo ashiyuke, when I am punching, should I go into zenkutsudachi? No, I would actually go back into kokutsudachi because zenkutsudachi is more of a transitional stance. Even though we start and finish the normal exercise of, uh, of NK Gyakuski and Zenkutsu, when you're doing these multiple flows, I think Shuto is, uh, I mean, uh, Kokutsudachi is more of a prepared stance than um, Zenkutsudachi. So I would tend to, see, when we start, I don't even start Zenkutsu generally. I'll start here like this. And then as the attack, let's say, comes from this way, as it comes, I'll step out of the way, NK Gyakuski, reverse punch. Step back, reverse punch. I'm in Kokutsu now, and there. And I kind of stay in Kokutsu because for me, it's more mobile if I have to move than here, here, and stepping into Zenkutsu. Zenkutsu's got both heels on the ground. And the golden rule is the only time you do both heels on the ground is when you're transitioning through that stance. Otherwise, you only ever have one heel on the ground. Okay, so let's look at that again. We'll just go left and right to start with. Step off, blocking NK Gyatsuki with my left arm. Itch. Gyatsuki, net. Reverse. 
pull back, reverse into a storm wash, you get sun, and then step again, she, and back into Korkutsu. Now, the hand that punched goes up. One, two. Okay? Technique comes from behind. Okay, I step out. One, two. Step there. Three, four, five. Now, the question can arise, I mean, theoretically you get these flowing and one will come out or the other will come out um, under pressure against a non-compliant opponent. What I like is the initial Nkegyak ski pretty well covers anything, okay? This is why I love this Kung Fu movement and I love the, the Tensho movement because with the hands are together, it's very hard to penetrate through, okay? And if they come in with a barrage, you're rolling your hands in until you can get on the inside position. Remember we were talking about that last uh, Monday. You get on the inside position here. Bang. Maybe we were, maybe we weren't. I did another live session with my buddy Tom Callahan, she hunt in America, and I think we did it then. So the duty block, get the inside position. The one with the inside position, generally speaking, is the one who wins. So if my hands are here on his biceps and his control. Okay, so remember that. So that means when I do this technique, what determines come, uh, next is what he throws, of course, but what happens now is it may be that that technique finishes. What will determine, quite literally, which hand I use in Mawashi Yuki will be determined by what, what he, his position, what he does next. So if he's dominantly right side now, uh, this sound, it might sound a little bit strange, but if he's dominantly the right side now and you have time because you just hit him, you have, you only need 0.1 of a second, boom. If he's dominantly right side, my right hand comes up because now I go to his outside and I can control him there and take him down. So I come here, bang, boom. Now if he's, if he's a uh, left hand would come up there, if he's Predominantly right side, my left hand would push across, then my right hand would come up and I would um, deal with it on the outside. If he's coming in, his left, so if he throw, let's say he throws a big flying left hook or left arm, then my hands come up here to protect, but notice now my right hand is essentially up and I'm turning here and now I have him on the outside of the hand so I can take him down there. Am I talking too much? <laughs> I'm sorry, I get a little carried away. It's all so exciting. Okay, but so let's look at that again. We're going to step back the attack. Well, let's do it from the front. We'll do all four directions again. The attack comes from the front. I step off, NK Gyatsuki, reverse punch, Stomoashiuke, reverse punch, and Stomoashiuke. Now I'm going to turn around behind me now. So the attack comes from behind. I'm using the top hand. To go in Kankyak ski here. See that? Reverse punch. My washi yuke, reverse punch. And there. Okay? Now the attack comes from over here. Okay? Because I have my right hand up. Or you can do it over here, it doesn't matter. But for now, we'll do it from this side. I step off. In Kankyak ski. Reverse punch. Stomwash yuke, reverse punch. And now my right hand. Does storm wash you again? Now the real attack comes from behind me again. One, two, one, two, and now my left hand goes up. So you can change it side to side. It's a really fantastic flow that you can work on. Let's just spend a few minutes now playing it with yourself. Start off first of all with NK Gyatsky alone. NK Gyatsky, NK Gyatsky, NK Gyatsky. Okay, now we go the other way. We go NK Gyatsuki from the front. Boom, NK Gyatsuki from behind. NK Gyatsuki this way this time. NK Gyatsuki this way. So you do left and right alternatively. Now we add Shuto Moashiuke. NK Gyatsuki, Gyatsuki, Shuto Moashiuke, Gyatsuki from behind. NK Gyatsuki, Shuto Moashiuke, Gyatsuki. Okay, let's just for the sake of it, stick to this side now. Attack comes from there. Step back, block one. Reverse punch, Stomo Ashuke. 
Once, twice. Now the attack comes from here. Get off the line. Okay. Now we add the third one. We add the Moashiuke. So we step back one. Two. Shitomoashiuke. Three. The reverse punch hand comes up into Moashiuke. Okay. Now the attack comes from behind. We go one. Two. And reverse punch hand comes up. Three. Okay, we're in this position now, but because of that extra step, we've got the attack coming from here. This is where you have to free up. There's no set form here because we, in reality, normally we'd be facing this way, but because we step up with the mice, you get, I tend to find the face backwards. So we're like this now. So let's imagine the attack comes from here. We go one, reverse punch, two, reverse punch, and then we set up my Okay, and you can go either hand here. This is the beauty. Oh, I love this exercise because you can be a left hand, left hand, and right hand. Okay, from behind now. From in front now. From behind again. From the side. From behind. Okay, so you see it's it's a kind of a mini carter, but there's no set form. I want you to think in terms of flowing left, right, and that's our Bellamy. Good to see you, buddy. Hope all's going well at home. Uh, so you can work the four angles, but for now, just to start with, you actually work two angles, two angles, two techniques, NK Gyakuski. Then two angles, four techniques. You add the Shitomai Shiuki onto the NK Gyakuski. And then two angles, six techniques. You add the NK Gyakuski uh, and Shitomai Shiuki, and then the Mawashiuke, okay? Keep the large circle around because as that technique comes in, you'll find that someone who is strong and is aggressive and they have that adrenaline pumping, if you try to do small movements without angle change, you can be in big trouble. You've got to get those large motions going to get the momentum behind your body as you change angles, okay? <laughs> oh, I'm sure you're exaggerating, Mike. Um, but anyway, uh, we just find you, you connect. The whole idea is, look, we've got this NK Gyakuski. There's the NK Gyakuski right there. So we've got the arm, the arm, and then the arm reverse. The arm reverse. You feel that arc of tension from the right shoulder to the left knee. Look, it builds up right there across the body, and then... We use the bunner, they call it bunner, that spring of the body, come back. And then that same thing, look, now I've got the arc of tension between my right knee and my left shoulder. I turn away, big circle round. Again, come back, mawashiuke round, reverse punch, and then again I can come into the mawashiuke. Okay, I just wanted to introduce that to you as a concept because when we're still in lockdown, there's only one person to train with and that's you. Well, then quite often one of the best things you can possibly do is, is to free yourself up from what Bruce Lee called the classical mess, okay? We learn these kata because they're wonderful. And, and in the old days, Solskjaer even had more kata. I guess he was a little conflicted because he came from both uh, the Shotokan line and the Goju line, and the two lines have two completely different sets of kata, generally speaking. Um, so he introduced a lot of them because when, in his mountain training, he was doing a lot of kata. He had no one to train with, and he liked all the kata. Some he liked more than others, obviously, like all of us. But over time, he got rid of a lot of the kata, and he said because for the purpose of learning a good quality technique, the ones that he kept essentially got everything covered, you know. Now I see that some groups, some coaching groups, are going back to adding more and more kata. But if I had my way, We'd be like some of those. So I'd be interested to know from Mike Clark, actually, how many uh, kata they do in uh, Okinawa and Goju. <laughs> um, how many kata?
how did you go, Okinawa and Goju, Mike? I'd be surprised if it's as many as Kyogushin. I think Kyogushin, in my opinion, has too many. We have essentially 22 kata, and then if you add the uh, the, the uh, Sokugi kata and the um, and, and the uh, Ura kata, well, then it's even more. But um, if I had my way, and I do because I'm old and grey, my eyes are get dim and I run my own dojo, so I can do what I want. Here we go. Look, if you count the two versions of Sanchin, we do 13. Well, there you go. See, for those who have been coming, you'll be you'll know that Mike, we talk about Mike, he's the author of the book Shingi Tai, uh, and he's from Okinawa and Goju. They do 13 kata, and that includes a variation, two variations of one kata. That's, you know, Kyogushin does... If we add our variations, it's double that. And I think for me anyway, it's a little too many. Sawsai taught me, I asked him once which kata, when I was getting ready for my um, uh, knee done, pretty comfortable with my kata. And he said, which kata are you working on? And I think it was a loaded question. I said, uh, which one should I be working on? He said, work on, on them all, but predominantly work on two. That is the one you like most and the one you're currently learning. They're the two that you should focus on. The one you like most, the one you're currently learning. <laughs> if I could do a video like Mike Tyson, Shane, I would. <laughs> but I won't. Yes, there you go. See, Mike Mike Plark's just saying most Okinawan goju uh, karate schools have less kata than the Japanese systems. I just tend to think that the the approach to training is somewhat different. And the objectives are very different too. Um, but uh, in Kyogushin, one kata per grade, that'd be fine. Uh, some some people try to do four kata per grade in the hope that they double jump and all this sort of foolishness. But at the end of the day, um, no kata is worth anything if you can't really make it work properly under pressure against a non-compliant opponent. That's the magic question. Would this te technique work against under pressure against a non-compliant opponent whose objective is to hurt me? If you can't say yes, well, then you shouldn't be moving on to the next kata. Okay. So um, also there's another thing too I need to uh, apologize. I, I was reviewing one of the live feeds that I did some time ago where I worked on Koken. Okay. And Koken is like um, it's, it's if you look at the way some people do Koken, they put the thumb at the fingertips like that. Yeah, there you go, 27, 22, 23, 45. I reckon we've got about 30 if you include the five, um, if you include the kick kata and also the or 33, including the, the ura kata now. But maybe I'm just counting them differently to you. But the point is it's too many. Okay, so back to the kokan. Okay, the kokan is the wrist strike. It's a really powerful technique, particularly for women. Okay, and it's a good at a certain angle, bang, like this. The reason it's good for women as well as men, if it's good for women, it's good for men. But it's not it's not uh, hard to generate a lot of power because there's no movement, see? In the hand, you've got all these bones, and if your fist isn't really strong, you start to crack little fingers and all kinds of horrible things. And most people don't know how to hold a fist, so they shouldn't be punching with the fist, okay? But if you can hit with a cock can. Okay, now I, I was reviewing that video, and I'm really embarrassed to say this, but I, I, in Kyokushin, Sosai said this, Essentially, the thing, the thumb is on the middle finger for most kokken techniques. But for a strong rising kokken, the finger goes to the ring finger. Okay, thumb on the tip, on the uh, origin of the ring finger, the thumb goes there, and then everything wraps around and everything strengthens. And you can see how my hand almost goes white because the blood gets pushed out of it. Okay. Now, when you go to the side, it goes on the ring finger, okay? You've got to go, uh, Patty, I think, because you've got your um, session coming up. I'm so sorry I miss it. I usually try to get on and catch the last five or so minutes, not because of you, because you're really ugly, but that little cute son of yours is fantastic. He does a great job. Anyway, the, thing, the, the finger should be on the origin of the ring finger, okay? They're like that. I think in that video... I said it should be on the origin of the middle finger. The origin of the middle finger is for the side technique, okay? And that usually, the side technique is a really fantastic way to enter from range four 
into range three. So in other words, I'm, I've finished, I've covered the kick range. I'm in the punches now. The punches are coming in. There's that technique right there. See that cork end. And one of the reasons I love it is because I couldn't tell you how many times when I've been wrestling with guys and so on, the fingers get jammed and so on in the, in the scramble for the grabs, okay? Cock in here like this, cock in there, and then you can control the arm with a, what they call a, a, a um, uh, underhook shoulder control. And then it comes in with cock in to the side, which means the thumb is on the ring finger. Cock in to the side, come up and hook down the back of the shoulder with a heavy elbow, okay? Bang, boom. Coming up now, because it's a strike, you're going to put your thumb at the tip of the ring finger. Bang, that becomes a strike. It's also a really good block too, by the way. I actually, it's, I'm surprised how often I use this um, when I'm sparring and so on because it actually, it's a great way to set up stuff without your hands getting hurt, okay? And then you've got that and then you come back with a palm. So out, palm heel, up. Palm heel, up, elbow, out, palm heel, up, palm heel, or up, elbow down. Okay, so that's just a quick look at um, – no worries, Al. Good to see you, buddy. you got to do what you got to do. I'm going to wind it up right on time today. Uh, I, if anyone's got any questions, get them down now so that I can get back to you quickly. Um, but I just wanted to focus on that today. The NK Gyakuski into Shitomawashiuke into Mawashiuke and do it multiple direction. It's just, it's, there is no reason why uh, we can't do it. I didn't even get on to the Sunshin breakout. Um, uh, yeah, we've got a few minutes. I'll be able to do that. There's no real rush. Um, but I wanted you to focus on that. So if you can spend a little bit of time, even as you're walking through the house, you know, this sort of thing. Bang, just don't whack your knuckles onto the wall, especially if it's jip rock, you'll put your hand straight through it. NK Gyakuski, NK Gyakuski reverse punch. NK Gyakuski reverse punch, come straight back, Mawashiuke. NK Gyakuski reverse punch, Mawashiuke reverse punch, bang, Mawashiuke. NK Gyakuski reverse punch, still Mawashiuke. Reverse punch, Mawashiuke. There like that. NK Gyakuski, the other hand. Reverse punch, still Mawashiuke, the other hand. Reverse punch, and then Mawashiuke again. That's just a really, you can. You don't even have to confuse yourself with the angles, by the way. That's just me being silly. What you can do is you can actually sit there like this, look, and hardly move your feet. Enke Gyakuski, still Mawashiuke, Mawashiuke. Enke Gyakuski, still Mawashiuke, Mawashiuke. Enke Gyakuski, left hand, right punch. Stomoshiuke, right punch. Mawashiuke, right hand up. Left punch. Right hand, NK Gyakuski, reverse punch, left hand. One, two. Stomoshiuke, one, two. Again, left hand up, one. Stomoshiuke, one. And then, oops, Mawashiuke there. One. Stomoshiuke, one. One. Now you can just simply add the direct direction change without overthinking it. And you can do the fifth one. I said there's a fifth one that's coming back to the front again. So you finish facing the front. So you can see you can play with that without pressure because uh, you've got lots of time in the lockdown. And it's just, I don't know if Rod spoke to you about something that I had planned, but I've got to speak to you about an idea that I had. Uh, so I'll drop you a mail or a message at some stage. Okay, so there you go, guys. It's a really simple approach that I have to starting to get a feel of the combination arcs of tension. The connection between NK Gyakuski, Shitomawashiuke, and Mawashiuke. NK Gyakuski, Shitomawashiuke, Mawashiuke. Okay, and you can play with those and, they, and you'll get um, so much uh, benefit out of them in the long run. And it's 100% something you can do in lockdown. Okay, uh, shout out to all my Patreon family. 
a lot of you are here and I'm really appreciative. You're really helping me keep these videos coming through the lockdown. Uh, so um, if you enjoy what you're doing, get along, have a look at the page. I wonder if I've got a link to it up here. I'll have to do all that. So oh, there we go. Look, bang. Let me try that. There's my Patreon link. Go and have a look. If you love what you're doing, um, share the love. Daniel Langworthy, he's one of my Patreon family. Rochelle, good to see you again. Thanks so much for coming all the way from Canada. It's probably really late there. And I know guys from Scandinavia, it's the first thing in the morning. It's, uh, it's for free, thanks. Yep, well, that's called sharing the love for you. But I know that most of the people here, uh, they uh, go to Patreon and uh, get along and, and uh, help me uh, a lot to supply these sort of things. Um, also, don't forget to uh, have a look at my webpage. And if you like this, enjoy it. Uh, hit the double tap. It's not bang, bang, double tap. It's hit like, hit share, or hit subscribe, hit the uh, notifications. Uh, but most appreciate if you share it with people so more and more people know what we're up to. Uh, Imran, thanks, buddy. Hope you enjoyed it. Good on you, Deepankar. Good to see you again. It's probably 35 degrees where you are right now. It's probably about 12 degrees. I wonder what temperature it is here now. It's pretty chilly. And Siv from Brisbane, I'll never forget that again. I'll never forget that you're from Brisbane again, of course, um, now that you've told me, and I remember you did tell me once before. Uh, but anyway, guys, just a short session today. I know it was because we didn't do the uh, deck of cards. You see what happens when we – if I did the whole deck of cards, it adds another 25 minutes. But, uh, Us, Mike, thank you very much. Arigato gozaimasu. And thanks for giving us that information about the kata in uh, Okinawa and Goju. Um, it just makes so much sense to me that you focus on a, a few rather than a lot. Um, yeah, by not doing the deck of cards, I've got to now back up and do the deck of cards now. But um, if by not doing them, we uh, save a lot of time. Come back in 24 hours and find the video on, on my YouTube channel. And you can also leave a comment, comment there if you like. There's my YouTube channel right there. Um, and uh, I look forward to seeing you on Friday. Friday will be another fun day as well. Uh, thanks, Paul from Deutschland. Good. Danke schön, my Freud. And I uh, look forward to seeing everybody again on um, Friday. Us. Any questions, put them there because I'm actually quite comfortable just hanging for a bit. Well, Sal, hope everything's going well at home, mate. Good to see those last photos that the main, that uh, that the toughest part is over there. Good on you. Janet, Friday, 3 p.m. Good to see you. Thanks, everyone. I'll give it a call. Well,